Okay, welcome to our latest uh, field skill. Today we're going to be going through a discharge measuring technique called the velocity area method. Now, if you look on the website you'll see uh, we've gone through another technique which is useful for mountain streams and that's uh, salt dilution gauging. Here we're going to do an alternative technique that we can use if river levels are low enough and if it's safe enough to get into the river. Now, as you can see we're in the forefield of the Fay Gletscher in Switzerland and we've got two proglacial rivers uh, one to my left here, that's the main proglacial river coming down and a slightly smaller one uh, over here to my right. Now we're going to have a go at gauging one of these rivers and safety is paramount. We wouldn't think about getting into any glacial river or any river for that matter if the flow depth was too, uh, too high or if the velocity was too fast or indeed we commonly seen glacial rivers or boulders and other rock material being, uh, being rolled down the river. So safety is paramount. And one of the first pieces of safety equipment we need to think about is a decent pair of waders. Obviously you need to make sure they're in good condition, no holes etc. Uh, they are essentially a, a glorified pair of Wellington boots. Not the most comfortable things uh, but essential for safety. Now. We wouldn't go into a deep river as I've just mentioned. Uh, we certainly won't be going much uh, higher than just below knee depth. You need to remember a cubic meter of water weighs one ton. So the pressure on your legs is going to be high and we need to take that into account. Rivers are dangerous environments. Particularly in glacial environments the flow levels can change relatively rapidly. So we would only go in just below knee, knee level as a maximum and even then be continually aware of, of changing conditions. Now the waders have got uh, another useful feature apart from the obvious safety features and that's a little pocket inside. For some, what have we got in the pocket? So firstly we have a notebook for recording your data um, collection. Secondly followed by a pencil so you can make your notes and that's explained more in our top tips. And lastly, for when the weather gets cold and wet, a tissue is very useful for when you've got like a cold and you know, like, how do you know? So yeah, those are the three things I have in my pocket. Now, equipment for doing the gauging. Here we've got a flow meter and we've got a propeller on one end which turns as the water moves past it and this measures the speed of flowing water in meters per second which our data logger then records. Very simple device, We've got a magnet in this rotating shaft, passes by a reed switch in this small uh, white section here. As the magnet passes the reed switch it closes it, that sends a signal up the wire to the logger. So if I just spin this, this is a fairly basic model and it takes uh, an average velocity reading every 10 seconds, so it will take a while for the numbers to appear on the screen. So someone, what have we got there? We've got a reading of 0.17. So 0.17 meters per second. And we would jot that down in our field notebook. And what we're gonna do is measure velocity at regular intervals across the river channel. Uh, and we'll lay out the tape measure, which we'll show you in a few moments and we, the shallow rivers will take the depth uh, 60 percent, sorry the velocity reading 60 percent from the surface of the water. Now that's why we have this second device which uh, is part safety but part science, um, a ranging pole or a section of a ranging pole. You'll see the red and white marks each correspond to 100 centimeters so we can use this to gauge the depth of our impeller on the flow meter. Now because this is a basic model we have to do that. More advanced models which we'll show you later in the video we can adjust the height of the impeller on the wading rod with sort of millimeter precision. But for today we're just going to use the wading, uh, the ranging pole also doubles as a staff to keep you steady in the river. Very important, we need to keep our footing. The bed of the river is likely to be uneven. Our material may be moving around, so we do need something to stabilize ourselves. So today we're gonna to use this ranging pole to serve both those functions, stability, but also gauging the 
depth of our impeller. If the river's deep enough, we would also uh, measure at point 0.2, so 20% from the surface of the river, and at point 0.8, 80% uh, from the surface of the river. Uh, our rivers are too shallow to do that, uh, so we're just going to go for 60%. If it was deep enough, we'd take 0.2, uh, 0.2 uh, 20% from the surface, 0.8, 80% from the surface, take the average of those two readings for the velocity, and we would go across the river at regular intervals doing that. Okay, so we're now at the edge of the river. We're going to uh, gauge using velocity area method. The first thing we need to do uh, is uh, secure a tape measure across the river so that we can take velocity readings at regular intervals. Uh, someone is also going to check the river while she's doing this with our ranging pole or our wading rod just to make sure uh, the bed is stable so we can get in safely uh, and we've got some idea about what the bed composition is. So take it very easy, uh, even safe looking streams can be relatively deep as you can see this one fairly deep in the middle fastest flowing point. Uh, you need to raise the tape above the water level so that the uh, force of the water doesn't drag the tape uh, downstream. So we've got the tape secured on the far side of the bank and we then do the same on this side. Uh, just pile some rocks on it uh, and we've got our distance nicely marked out. Okay, so we're now ready to take the first measurements. Our channel is just over three meters wide. So we're going to take 10 measurements uh, of velocity, so that's a measurement every 30 centimetres. Now someone has measured the river depth of the first point and it's uh, 20 centimetres, 0.2 of a metre. Now it's very important we do all our measurements in metres, so depth in metres, velocity in metres per second, because the final calculation will be in cubic metres per second. So someone's now going to set the impeller at 60% uh, of the depth from the surface. Now, one thing to note is you must put the impeller facing upstream. And once you've found your depth, move the ranging pole away from the impeller so that it's not interfering with the flow. Uh, for the same reason, very important uh, that we don't stand upstream of the impeller. Now we let the velocity reading run for a few seconds until the reading has uh, averaged out on the flow meter and someone will then read out the velocity reading to a, a note taker on the bank. So it's 0.23 meters per second. Okay and we repeat that process every 30 centimeters across the river until we reach the final bank. In order to work out the discharge, you'll need to measure the river's velocity in metres per second and the river's area in metres squared. Once you've collected your data, calculate the discharge of each subsection using the following formula. Discharge equals velocity times area. The sum of the subsection discharge gives you a total discharge of the river at that site. The stage discharge relationship is an important tool in hydrology and is dependent upon a number of factors including the shape, size, slope and roughness of the channel. Stage is the water level above an arbitrary point, usually the zero height being near the river bed. The discharge of a river is the volume of water which flows through at any given time. There is a positive correlation between river discharge and stage. As the water height increases, the volume of water passing through the channel also increases. After collecting the stage and discharge measurements, you can then develop a stage-discharge relationship graph like this one.